Let me ask you a serious question. This is one of the most serious questions a spiritual leader could ever ask you because the answer to this question determines a lot about your success, about your relationship with the Lord, about your relationship with other people. I need to ask you this question and I need you not to give me a pat answer, not to give me a quick answer. I need you to really spend some time considering this question. Now, I've gone all over the world asking people this same question in the context of ministry. And usually people gasp. Usually people will begin to have the aha moment that sets them free. Usually people will weep when they realize their situation and cry out to God for deliverance from their circumstances. So I'm going to ask you this question and I need you, I need you to really, really decide to press into God with this. This is not a quick, oh yes, oh no, 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 no. Mm -mm. This is not a, a knee-jerk reaction question where you just give me a pat answer quickly. You give me a a, a, a head nod or, 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 or a head shake. No, 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 no. We're going deeper here. And, and I, and I, you know, you won't even be able to answer this on this broadcast. Well, some of you will, because God's going to open your eyes in a dramatic way. Some of you will, and some of you already know the answer to this question. And those of you who know the answer and those of you whose answer is yes, and you're still not doing anything about it, you are the ones that are in the most danger. And so I want to help you to break free from these snares today. So what is the question? Here's the question. Are you tolerating Jezebel? Go ahead and let that sink in. Are you tolerating Jezebel? Now, your immediate answer, many of you, no, of course not. I would never. <laughs> but don't answer too quickly because you might not see this demon operating through people around you. You might think you're an expert on Jezebel. That's a dangerous stance to take. Jezebel has many faces, many, many, many faces. Jezebel has many maneuvers, many ways in which she manifests. So please don't shake this off. Don't be like, no, that's not me. I'm moving on to the next broadcast. No, I would implore you not to take that stance with this question because I've gone all over the world preaching, teaching, prophesying about the spirit of Jezebel as a mandate on my life. And there's never been a single meeting where at least three quarters of the audience didn't have to come forth and repent for tolerating Jezebel. Now, if you don't know what Jezebel is, then you don't know, you, you wouldn't know whether you're tolerating it or not, would you? If, if you're ignorant to Jezebel's devices, then how would you know if you were tolerating it? You wouldn't. You wouldn't. That's why you need to get educated because scripture tells us, Paul said, don't be ignorant of the devil's devices. Ignorant doesn't mean you're stupid. It means you're uninformed, unaware. And there's been so much erroneous teaching about Jezebel. There's so many goofy checklists on the internet, tick down these boxes and you can discern a Jezebel. Mm, that's dangerous because Jezebel has many faces. And I've written several books, done several courses on Jezebel. I've had more trouble with this demon over the last 20 plus years than any other specific demon. This has been the biggest issue that's come against me, fight me, claw against me, try to slander me, try to derail me, through uh, usually through other people, usually through other people. You know, not usually principality level warfare. Listen, too many people want to tear Jezebel down. If you can't deal with a Jezebel that's on the ground in your church or in your workplace or in your family, how are you going to deal with the principality that's influencing those people? If you can't deal with the Jezebel coworker or the Jezebel cousin or the Jezebel friend or the Jezebel pastor, how are you going to deal with the principality over your region? You can't. You got to get the boots on the ground stuff right first. But if you're tolerating Jezebel, forget about it, man. You can't take authority over something you, you've agreed with and you get what you tolerate. This is Jennifer LeClaire and this is Mornings with the Holy Spirit pressing in daily to the power and presence of God. I want you to come on in, guys. And this is a serious broadcast today. This is, well, they're all serious in a way, but this is serious. For some of you, this could be a life and death. I remember one time I was tolerating Jezebel and didn't know it. I was tolerating someone operating in the spirit. I didn't initially discern it. And things began to go really wrong in my life. 
my teeth began to break. The dentist said, what's wrong with you eating rocks? He goes, I've been your dentist for 15 years. I've never seen, you know, anything wrong with your teeth. You're strong. I began to develop a tremor. And uh, my wellness doctor thought I was starting to get Parkinson's disease. And he said, who in your family has Parkinson's disease? I didn't have a thing wrong with me. It was a Jezebelic attack. And so think, and I began to lose tens of thousands of dollars in my businesses. And this happened pretty quickly within just a few months of tolerating this demon. And obviously, you know, it was working through a person. So I don't want you to take this lightly. You know, you, you need to plug in with me this morning for, for, for your sake or the sake of someone you love. And it's not what you think it is. Jezebel is not a spirit of control and manipulation. That's where many people get it wrong. And they look at everybody with control and they say Jezebel. No, that's not what Jezebel is. We're going to do a little education later in the broadcast and we're going to pray and we're going to repent. I said, yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Amen. Amen. We're going to do some preemptive, uh, preemptive uh, repentance, warfare repentance. So quickly, guys, come on in, share this with somebody. I need you to share this as fast as you can so we can get started. I need you to share this on your timeline, share it via messenger, tag somebody, ping somebody, get it tweeted. Help me get the word out because I really want to see people break free. And it's, as you know, yesterday's broadcast was cut short and it was the same topic. And I was trying to pray through it. The, the sound went out. What are you going to do? So clearly the enemy doesn't want you to hear this message. And maybe you don't want to hear it. Maybe you've got a Jezebel spirit. Maybe your skin started to crawl. Maybe you're starting to consider in your soul false accusations against me because that demon in you is mad. There I said it. There I said it. But stick with me to the end. And if you can't, then please listen to the replay. And all you replay viewers, this is for you too. Because God wants to set you free from the influence of Jezebel's wicked witchcraft. And we want to do this corporately today, and we're going to win today. So please share this quickly. Share it, share it on your timeline. Share it via Twitter. Share it via Messenger. Get the word out for me. And we're going to read. We're going to do the rolling, guys. This becomes a replay over on my YouTube channel, YouTube.com/slash Jennifer Leclaire Ministries. Please go subscribe there. It's really critical that you subscribe to that channel so that I can produce more content. I said it's really critical that you subscribe to that channel so I can produce more long-form content over there. So check that out, please. And then we're going to read today from evening. Uh, no, we're going to read from Mornings with the Holy Spirit. That was my first devotional. We're going to read from Mornings with the Holy Spirit. And then we're going to pray. We're just going to lift up the name of Jesus and see what he's doing, what he wants to do, what he wants to say, how he wants us to pray. And we're going to follow him. We're going to follow him. So follow me as I follow Christ. And begin to press in with me. Begin to pray in the spirit even now. We've got, we're on a, we're on a, a two minute countdown here. Less than two minutes. We're going to start this broadcast. And it's going to be a liberating broadcast. Some of you, it's going to be confrontational. Some of you, you're, go, you're going to need to repent. Some of you. And that's a good thing. That's not a, a judgment or an accusation against you. It's many times repenting for our own ig ignorance when clearly all of this is in the word of God. Amen. So we want to do that today. And then we're going to get into this Jezebel segment later in the broadcast. That's going to be our finale. So stick around. Stick around. Tell somebody, go wake up your neighbor and say, hey, hey, yo, Jezebel, wake up. Don't do that. That would be nice. Say, I think I've got a broadcast that would really help you. <laughs> Here it is. Come on. Amen. So are you ready? If you shared, say, I'm ready. If you've not shared, you're not ready. Sorry, I've not been welcoming you today. I'm just in teaching mode right now. So I'm not really looking at your comments. But I'm seeing you on there now. Hello, Phyllis. Hello, Nancy. Amen. Hello, Jasmine. Good morning. Oh, we're doing really bad with the sharing. Is that because people think it's a replay? I find that when people think it's a replay, they think there's nothing in it for them. And those are the days when most people get delivered. It's not a replay. And so what if it is? <laughs> I heard that somebody the other day was complaining because they thought there was a replay. If I want to promote an old book, I'll promote an old book. If I want to promote an old course, I'll promote an old course. You're robbing yourself. So watch out, prayer hub leaders, and be careful. Help me out. Amen. Help me help people. Squash the nonsense. My goodness. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I'd rather have the remnant than the gimme, gimme, bless me only Christians every day. Wouldn't you? Are you ready to start? Because I don't have much time today. I feel like I need to just release this and just get off because I'm feeling there's something brewing in the background that I don't want any part of. You know what it is? It's Jezebel. 
So we're not going to waste a whole lot of time getting to that today because I can see that there's somebody on this broadcast that is being influenced even now to begin to curse me. It's not you. You're, you're precious. God loves you. It's not you, but the enemy is using you. You're beginning to, to, to get bitter and make accusations against me. I can hear it in the spirit. See, when you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you can hear many times what people are thinking, what people are saying about you behind closed doors, and they don't know it. Remember how Elisha saw in the king's bedchamber? Remember that? Remember that? Mm-hmm. It's the truth. Let me get a sip of water and let's do this. <clears throat> A pastor might patty cake your devil, but an apostle will cast it out. Let's go. Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, Senior Leader of the Awakening House of Prayer Global Movement. This is Mornings with the Holy Spirit, pressing in daily to the power and presence of God. I want to prophesy to you something good is going to happen to you today. Today's broadcast is brought to you by the Elijah Company Intensive, and it's right around the corner. We are four weeks away, and we're almost full. We've got a few seats here and there. We don't like to overcrowd it. If you're coming, please get registered. If you applied, please look in your spam box or email us. So many of you have put wrong email addresses on your application, so we have no way to reach you. And then you get mad at us. I applied six weeks ago. To Guess what? You just disqualified yourself. Go over there, apply seven classes, three days, Q&A, impartation service, deliverance service, altar calls, prophetic exercises, prophetic fellowship. It's all there for you and it's life changing. I guarantee you that. You'll plug in one way or another, your life will be changed. Some of you leave free. Some of you leave equipped. Some of you leave with all of the above. It's there for you. Check it out. Globalpropheticcenter.com. You're looking for the Elijah company intensive. There's a few seats left. We're four weeks away and you're almost out of time. Don't wait any more. Guys, I'm coming to you live from South Florida. Our church awakening house of prayer is here in Fort Lauderdale. And I'm there on Sundays, preaching, praying, prophesying, and casting out devils. Our heart is to equip you to live a supernatural breakthrough lifestyle. Give me a year of your life and apply the word I'm teaching and watch the transformation. I'm teaching three different messages every Sunday, 1047 AM. That's our premier service. We've got some of the best prophetic worship I've ever sat under in my life. It's spontaneous. It's real. It's deep. It's raw. And we're going for it. Guys, come on over at 1047. Or if you're not in the region, plan a visit. We can't wait to see you. We really love when you visit from all over the world. Then you can watch online as well at AHOP dot online a h o p dot online you can go deeper with us become an official web church member at a hop dot online slash web church your official membership gets you so much more you'll be able to watch not just the weekly messages but all the archives as well as the virtual life group virtual healing rooms prophecy rooms deliverance rooms virtual prayer line virtual pastoral advice the virtual midweek there's so much there for you so check that out if you want to go deeper a hop dot online slash web church. The second and third services are school of the spirit at a hop, which means we're going deeper into the things of God. 1 30 PM guys, South Florida, come on over deliverance from family wounds. People are getting delivered all over the church. We're going to have to get the carpets cleaned. That's how serious this is. School of the spirit TV slash family wounds. If you're not in the region, watch it online. God, there's no distance in the spirit, but check it out. If you're here in South Florida, come on by. Same with 4 p.m. We're starting a series on Sunday called Prophets and the Seven Mountain Mandate. You have a mountain or mountains, actually. You're all on the family mountain. You're all in the church mountain, prophets, right? But there's other mountains. Prophets in the Bible prophesy to the society, to the mountains. You need to find your mountain, discover how to discern your mountain, deal with the demons on your mountain, and how to navigate that mountain. I've never heard anybody teach on this before, and I'm digging deep, deep in scripture to give you these classes. So check it out. School of the spirit TV, seven mountains, the number seven school of the spirit TV, the number seven mountains. Let's get started today with our devotion. We're going to read today from mornings with the Holy spirit, listening daily to the still small voice of God. And today's devotion is titled make more room 
Make room for more of me. Make room for more of me. I like that. Make room for more of me. And here's what I heard the Lord say. Receive me. Receive more of me. Make room in your heart for my truth. Make room in your heart for my wisdom, my gifts, my fruit, my power. Make room for me, says the Lord. Making room for more of me means setting aside heavy weights, set aside worry, set aside the world's distractions, set aside bad memories from the past that slow you down. And the Lord says, when you let go of these things, you will be able to reach new depths in my love. That's such a good word. He said, I will shed my love abroad in your heart so that you can pour out that love to others for the glory of Jesus. Amen. And amen. I love this right here. When you let go of these things, you'll be able to reach new depths in my love. Have you ever felt spiritually stagnant? Have you ever felt like you just, you're not growing? Have you ever felt like you're just not advancing like the people around you? There's something wrong. You could be, yes, in a season where you're just on the shelf or in the prayer closet or in the cave. But even in those times, those dark nights of the soul, you should be growing in trust and faith. We're always supposed to be growing from glory to glory. So if you're not growing, something's wrong. Maybe it's unforgiveness. Maybe it's uh, resentment. Maybe it's regret. We have to get rid of these things to make more room for him. We have to let him fill us completely to overflowing. And so we have to lay aside some things that hinder love. Amen. Scripture references are in the devotional. Pick up your copy of Victory to, um, of Mornings with the Holy Spirit wherever you find books online or on my website at jenniferleclair.org. Now the prayer starter, I will decrease so you can increase. I will crucify my flesh so there's more room for you. I will die daily to the things of this world. I will deny myself and carry my cross. I ask only one thing as I set out to do this, give me grace. And of course, the Lord never asks us to do anything that he doesn't give us the grace to do. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we exalt you. We exalt you, God, over the heavyweights. <laughs> we exalt you, God, over the guilt and the shame, the rejection. We exalt you over our busyness, over our mind traffic, over the anger in our heart. We exalt you, God. You are the most high God. And we will not come into your presence to pray without casting these things aside. So, Father, we cast everything at your feet that we're not supposed to carry, the sin and the weights. We cast them at your feet now in the name of Jesus, the stress and the worry. We cast these things at your feet, God, the anxiety and the fear, the depression, the addiction, the, the fill in the blank or whatever it is that we're carrying. Come on, you need to do this for yourself. We cast it at your feet. Your word tells us to cast our cares upon you because you care for us. So Lord, would you forgive us today for carrying things that you want to take from us? Gladly, you gladly want to take them from us. Gladly, you want to remove these burdens from our shoulders. Your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So would you forgive us for allowing the wicked one to tempt us into carrying things that we're not graced to carry? Because Lord, I know you've not graced us to carry worry. You've not graced us to carry shame. You've graced us to carry your burden, your prayer burdens, your burden for the lost. You've graced us to carry those burdens, not the world's burdens, not the devil's burdens. So Father, we unburden ourselves in your presence, and we ask you to cleanse us from the unrighteousness Cleanse us from the effects of worry and emotional pain. Cleanse us from the effects of disappointment and discouragement. Lord, cleanse us from these sins that we entered into willingly. We were tempted, but we did it willingly. Nobody made us. The devil didn't force us to be discouraged. We meditated on wrong thoughts long enough until where we got discouraged, depressed, anxious, fearful, fill in the blank. We're the ones who took the bait. We're the ones who took the thought. We're the ones who kept rolling over these negative emotions until we were trapped. <laughs> so forgive us and set us free today in the name of Jesus. Father, we love you so much.
And we want to do your will. We want to do things your way. <laughs> Lord, we want to do things your way because your ways are better than our ways. So many times, if we're honest with ourselves, we neglect to acknowledge you. So many times, if we're honest with ourselves, we forget to even ask you about things. We don't ask you for wisdom. We don't ask you for grace. We don't ask you. We don't seek your face. We don't press in. We don't press past the flesh to the secret place. Father, would you forgive us for leaving you out of the equation? When you love us so much, you want to do this with us. You want to walk with us arm in arm. You want to walk with us in the cool of the day like you did with Adam and Eve. But so many times we just get up and we run. We don't give you a second thought. And all of a sudden it's nighttime and we're tired and we don't know what happened. Where did the day go? I was going to get in the word. I was going to pray. I was going to go do that good deed. I was going to give those alms and the day is over. Lord, we don't want to want to be in bondage to a 24 hour time cycle. Lord, help us, Lord to put you first so that you can expand our time. Help us, Lord, to seek you first, <laughs> to seek you first, <laughs> to seek you first, to seek your kingdom and your righteousness first so that everything else we need will be added to us, including time. You are the God who redeems the time. You are the God who multiplies our time. You are the God who has our times in his hands. So, Father, we choose today to put you first, to keep you first. We choose today to allow you to have your way. We choose today to meditate on your thoughts rather than the thoughts that the enemy works over time to inject in our soul. Father, would you help us to be more discerning? <laughs> because you tell us in your word to think on things that are lovely and pure of a good report, excellence and praiseworthy. Lord, we're sometimes we're not, we don't, we, we don't even catch it. We're thinking all these other things. They're not in the buckets of what's legal. In your kingdom, we're thinking illegal thoughts. So many times we're thinking illegal thoughts. We're trying to figure things out in our mind and we're making ourselves upset. We're getting anxious. We're getting uh, discouraged, depressed, overwhelmed. <laughs> so many times we just leave you out of the equation. When you are the equation, <laughs> Jesus, so many times we leave you out of the equation. When you are the equation. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the, 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 the author, the finisher of our faith. You're the forerunner and you're our back, our, our rear guard. You're everywhere all the time. You are the equation. <laughs> and we leave you out. We don't recognize your wisdom sometimes. I don't know what's wrong with us, God. I don't know what's wrong with us. How on earth do we think we could ever do anything apart from you when you told us flat out you can't? <laughs> Jesus, you told us in your word, apart from me, you can do nothing, but we don't believe that. Obviously, we just don't believe it because we try to do things without you all the time. Then we make messes and then we come run into you. God, help me, help me, help me. And God's like, I'll help you, but I would rather you didn't have to go through this pain. I would rather you didn't have to go through this trauma, this drama, this upset, this hope, this, this broken heart, this financial loss. Would you help us to get it? Lord, drill it into our, our, our noggins, God. Drill it into our head. Would you drill it into our head, God? <laughs> Would you drill it into our head to ask you first? When we were little kids, we had to ask mommy and daddy for everything. We didn't go outside without asking. We didn't, we didn't watch the TV without asking. We didn't, we didn't just get you know, the cookies out of the jar without asking when we were little children. Well, we are your children. And you've told us in your word what's permissible. You've told us in your word what's legal. You've given us a book to live by. It's called the Bible, the Holy Scriptures. You've told us what is out of order. And you've told us what you want us to do. You've made it very clear. It's not nebulous. You've told us the way to live. You've given us Proverbs and Psalms. You've given us examples of men and women in the Bible who failed miserably and who succeeded wonderfully. You've given us your spirit. You've given us your blood. You've given us your name. You've given us your word. You've given us the weapons of our warfare, which are not carnal, but mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. You've given us your armor. You've given us everything we need to succeed. And how many times, Lord, have we neglected it? How many times have we neglected to put on our armor? How many times have we neglected to, 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 to wield the sword of the spirit? How many times have we neglected to, to acknowledge you in all of our ways so you can direct our paths? How many times? The steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord, but sometimes we want to order our own steps. And that's when we make messes. That's when we birth Ishmael's. That's when we 
we fall on our face. So, Father, would you help us today to press in to your way? Your way is better. Your way is higher. Your way is perfect. The ways of the Lord are perfect. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. The ways of the Lord are perfect. <laughs> the ways of the Lord are perfect. The ways of the Lord are perfect. Help us, Lord. Make known your ways to us like you did to Moses. Help us, Lord, because without faith, it's impossible to please you. And whoever would draw near to you must believe that you are and that you're a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. You tell us in your word, if we need wisdom to ask and you'll pour it out liberally, even if we've made messes, you're not going to rebuke us. You're not going to upbraid us. The scripture is breathed out by your very own spirit. It's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. <laughs> your word is our life. It's our light. It's our truth that sets us free. So help us, Lord, to draw so close to you that we can hear your whisper. You speak many times in a still, small voice. You speak many times in a still, small voice. So would you help us to draw so close to you? To draw so close to you that we feel your very breath against our ear. To draw so close to you that we can't possibly miss what you're saying. To draw so close to you that you reward us with wisdom, with words of life, words of love, words of strategy, words that bring increase in promotion. You have a way for us to walk in that's prosperous. You told Joshua to meditate on your, on your word day and night and to be careful to do all that it says. Then, then we'll make our way prosperous. Then we'll find good success. If it worked for Joshua, it'll work for us. If it worked for Joshua, it'll work with, for us. If it worked for Joshua, it'll work for us. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently and got an answer. He prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three and a half years it did not rain. Then he prayed fervently that it would rain, and it rained. Lord, we want to walk in that kind of power, but that requires us to do things your way. We can't do things our way and expect to walk in the power of God to the level that we desire. Help us, Lord. 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 Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord. Help us to stand strong. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to know your will. Help us to discern the demon powers that try to derail us. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, God is good. Share this quickly because we're getting into our Jezebel segment now, and I need you to share this quickly. I need to get as many people on here as we can, as quick as we can. Many people thought today was a replay, and they didn't join, and they're missing their opportunity for deliverance. And that's the trouble. That's the problem. Amen. If you're a prayer warrior, don't worry about it. Get on and pray. Isn't that funny? About 400 people are missing out because they thought today was a replay. Be very careful, guys. Be very careful, guys. You might miss the day of your visitation. Not you all. You're the ones here. I'm talking to the ones who will stumble on this later and realize, uh-oh, there's something about the live broadcast that's just different. There's something about the live broadcast because God has given me words and unctions for those of you who are pulling on the spirit right now. That's why the live broadcast, the replays are good. Don't get me wrong. But there's something about the live broadcast that just because you're pulling on the anointing, right? You understand? You're pulling on the anointing right now, right? You're hungry. So you're pulling. So the words out of my mouth are a response to the hunger of your heart, right? So there's something about the live broadcast. The replays are good too. But there's something about the live broadcast. Share this quickly. It's very rare that we put up replays anyway. On the weekends, we put up replays. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready? If, yes or no? Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes or no? Listen. Jesus said this to the church at Thyatira in Revelation 2.20. Nevertheless, I have... Now, here was a church. They were, they were doing well in the realm of love. 
They, you know, Jesus said, he said, I know your works, your love, your service, your faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than your first. So here's Jesus commending this church in Thyatira. He said, I see, man, you're walking in love. You're doing good works, man. You, you, you're serving your community. You've got great faith. You're patient. And he said, as for your works, there are, the last are more than the first. I mean, that's an amazing commendation. Wouldn't you like the Lord to say that about you? The Lord is saying that about some of you. This is how some of you run. This is how some of you walk. But then he gets to, we get to verse 20 and he says, nevertheless, I have a few things against you. Uh-oh. I have a few things against you. Oh, Jesus, help us. I have a few things against you that you'd tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to sacrifice to, to, to uh, immorality and to eat things sacrificed to idols. Now, that's a, that's a heavy revelation right there. You need to see this. You need to see this. I want you to see this. I have this complaint against you. You're tolerating that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophet to lead my servants astray. She teaches them to commit immorality and to eat food offered to, offered to idols. Listen, I gave her time to repent, but she does not want to turn away from her immorality. Therefore, I will throw her on a bed of suffering and those who commit adultery with her will suffer greatly unless they repent and turn away from her evil deeds. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am the one who searches out the thoughts and intentions of every person. And I will give to each of you whatever you deserve. Notice this. It's not just Jezebel who falls on the sickbed. Also her children. <laughs> So, and those who commit adultery with her. So these are the people who are under her teaching, the people who have been influenced by her, the people who are tolerating her, the people who are in agreement with her will suffer greatly. So if you're suffering, you can't seem to close the doors. You have to look at whether or not there's some kind of agreement with Jezebel. I'm not saying you have a Jezebel spirit. I'm saying you can be attached to someone who has a Jezebel spirit. And when I say has it, I mean influenced by the principality. You can't cast out a Jezebel spirit. Jezebel is a principality. It's really asterisk. We call it Jezebel. I don't have time to teach all this. Guys, I've got several books on Jezebel. I've got several courses on Jezebel at schoolofthespirit.tv. I can't give you the hours and hours and hours and hours of teaching, but I'm telling you, you can't cast out Jezebel. It's not even Jezebel. It's asterisk. Asterisk was the goddess that was influencing Queen Jezebel. Ashtoreth was this same goddess that was influencing the woman in Revelation 2.20. It's not a spirit of control. It's not a spirit of manipulation. It's a spirit of seduction. And if you come into agreement with this, then you will suffer. And it doesn't matter if you know you're in agreement with it or not. You don't have to know you're in agreement with it. It's so subtle sometimes. Jezebel has many faces, many faces, many faces. That's why I did the course, Will the Real Jezebel Please Stand Up? at schoolofthespirit.tv because people think they know what Jezebel looks like. Jezebel has many masks, many masks. And when we tolerate these things, bad things happen because Jesus said that, but that's how bad he hates the spirit. We're not supposed to tolerate it, but pastors tolerate Jezebel on the platform because she sings good. Je pastors tolerate Jezebel in the pews because they're the biggest giver in the church. We, tell we tolerate Jezebel when we won't confront it. We're supposed to confront it or we're supposed to exit the scene. We're not supposed to just watch Jezebel do what Jezebel wants to do. It's hurting people. It's damaging, you know, the momentum of ministries. It's, 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 it's holding back things that God wants to do in the earth, right? It's delaying things. So we have to understand. We have to, and I'm not saying you have a Jezebel spirit. Don't, if, if you're offended right now, good sign you probably do have an uh, influence of a Jezebel spirit in your life. Because I'm not even, I'm not, I'm not accusing you of anything. But if you're squirming, you got some kind of something going on. Jezebel, that, 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 that influences you when you have hurts and wounds and these things. I, I can't keep teaching. I got to, I got to, I got to start praying. But you've got to get over there. If you want to learn more, there's several classes on Jezebel at schoolofthespirit.tv. I've got books on it. 
This is not Lester Summerall, who passed away, said that that the, the greatest assignment against the church in the last days would be the spirit of Jezebel. And we still don't know what it is. We do. I do. But so many people teach it wrongly. And that's why we can't deal with it, because we got wrong teaching on it. So, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we exalt you over Jezebel. Forgive us for any way in which we've allowed Jezebel to influence our lives, either directly from that principality because of the hurts and wounds that we didn't seek healing for, or through other people in our lives. And we just don't see it sometimes. We don't see it. Or we don't want, we see it, but we don't want to believe it. Father, would you forgive us? Lord, forgive us for tolerating Jezebel. Forgive us for tolerating the spirit in our midst in whatever way, shape, or form that it is manifesting. Forgive us, Lord, for permitting the spirit to operate in our midst, operate against our mind, operate in our families, operate in our workplaces, operate in our schools through our children. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for tolerating this, God. Forgive us for suffering it, God. Forgive us for allowing it, God. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us because this is a false prophetic spirit. This is a spirit of seduction and it woos us away from our first love. It brings us into dependence on a person with a demon rather than the God who sits on the throne. Forgive us, Lord, for allowing the spirit to run roughshod in our midst, God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, would you show us any common ground we have with Jezebel? Lord, would you begin to magnify, the, put a magnifying glass, shine a light on the hurts and the wounds in our souls that might lead us into a covenant with Jezebel? Would you help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to be willing to do the work that we need to do in our souls to, 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 to disallow or forbid or shut out the influence of the spirit in our lives in Jesus name? Father, in the name of Jesus, would you help us to, 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 to cultivate a hatred for this demon because you hate it? Help us, Lord, to not be willing to put up with it even for a moment. Help us, Lord. Give us a Jehu anointing that will go and uh, collectively call the, 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 for the throwdown of Jezebel in the name of Jesus. Lord, we need your help. We repent of any way in which we have agreed with Jezebel. We repent for any Jezebelic tendencies in our souls. We repent for any way in which we have knowingly or unknowingly cooperated with Jezebel through information seeking, through gossip, through slander, through intimidation and threatening. Lord, we ask you to forgive us and help us to overcome. Lord, we don't want to be under Jezebel's thumb. We don't want to be one of Jezebel's puppets. So we must nip it in the bud. We must cut all ties because we can't break the Jezebel assignment until we break the Jezebel alignment. We can't break free from the influence of the spirit as long as we've got soul ties with Jezebelic people, as long as we've made inner vows that uh, have attracted this demon to come and protect us. God, would you forgive us and wash us clean? God, would you help us to discern the operations of this spirit because it does have many faces and it does wear many masks. It's like a chameleon. It doesn't manifest the same way every time. And just as soon as we think we're starting to get a handle on how this operates, here comes a new manifestation of Jezebel. So help us not to be proud in our knowledge because knowledge does puff up. Help us, Lord, to avoid the puffing up that knowledge brings. We're not experts on anything. <laughs> We're not experts on anything. We want to be experts on you, but we, we will learn of you forever. And we will learn uh, of the ways of the kingdom forever. We will never be experts, so to speak. We can be knowledgeable. We want to be knowledgeable about you and your ways. We want to be knowledgeable about the enemy and his ways. We want to be knowledgeable and self-aware about ourselves and our ways so that we can avoid the snare of this demon in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, to choose to walk your way, to repent, to walk low, to be humble, to, to, but at the same time to be bold and to take authority in our households, in our spheres of influence, to disallow that spirit from coming in because it does come to steal, to kill and destroy. It does come to turn things upside down. It does come to wreck stuff in our lives, to wreak havoc, chaos and confusion, to bring strife and upset and division. So help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus to break all ties with Jezebel, whether it's 
influencing us from the outside or whether it is influencing us through a person or whether it's influencing us because of a, a hurt and a wound that we have. God, help us to break all these ties and the lies that Jezebel has spoken to our hearts. We give you praise and we give you honor as the one true living God. You are good and you are great. There's no one like you. No one who's mighty to save. No one who's mighty to save, to mighty to heal, mighty to deliver. So we thank you, Lord. And help, Lord, just, just restore us to our first love because Jezebel tries to lead us away. Restore us to your heart fully and make us more sensitive to you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Did you get it? Did you get it? This is serious, man. I mean, I've got probably 30 hours of teaching on this. I can't even teach you all of it right now. This is a real thing here. This is a real thing. I'm going to tell you quickly the names of my books on Jezebel and the Jezebel courses. One of them, my first book on Jezebel was The Spiritual Warrior's Guide to Defeating Jezebel. And that goes really deep into the history of this spirit in the earth, as well as practical examples. Then there's uh, Jezebel's Puppets. And Jezebel's Puppets was about Jezebel, Ahab, the eunuchs, the false prophets, and all of her cast of characters. Then there's uh, Satan's Deadly Trio, which is Jezebel, Witchcraft, and Religion, and how they work together. Now, if you go on schoolofthespirit.tv, you're going to find my, my, my classes on this. Deliverance from the Spirit of Jezebel is one of them. Discerning Jezebel's intercessors is another one. Jezebel's revenge, the spirit of Adelia rising and attacking. I've also got a book on that. Then there's will the real Jezebel please stand up. And so if you sense that you've got some issues here and you've not heard much about it, or perhaps you've been taught wrong. If you were taught that Jezebel is a spirit of control manipulation, you were taught wrong. Jezebel uses control manipulation as a means to an end, but Jezebel is not a spirit of control. Otherwise it would, there is a spirit of control. It's not the same thing. There is a spirit of control. It's not the same thing. Jezebel uses control and manipulation. So be careful. Get equipped. Understand what you're dealing with. Because I'll tell you what, we've run, in, run into this thing a, no, a number of times. And it's wicked and it's nasty. And it's never the same way twice. There's markers. There's common denominators. We actually had to ask uh, someone to leave our church last year. Was it last year? I've never had to ask someone to leave the church in 20 plus years of ministry, but she would, would not repent of that spirit, would not repent, did not want to, did not want to come out of alignment with it and was, was drawing people to herself, prophesying, wounding people, gossiping, dig around. And, you know, it was, it was a very severe case, very severe case. We tried for two years to get her free and she just would not stop, probably waited too long. Amen. 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 I can't list all the books and courses. Go to school of the spirit.tv. Look in the spiritual warfare section. And you can also go on amazon.com, type in my name and type in Jezebel and you'll find my books. There's a few other books that they like to use my name and their keywords to get traffic. Be careful to make sure the book was actually written by me because there's a lot of, a lot of junk out there. There's good books out there too on Jezebel beyond mine, but there's a lot of junk out there. And they'll use my name and their keywords to cause their book to rise up when you type in my name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So it's real easy. Just go to schoolofthespirit.tv, spiritual warfare section. You'll find the list. Go to Amazon, type in my name, and type in Jezebel. And you'll find those, those, there's four books as well. Amen. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Guys, remember the Elijah Company? It is coming up right around, it's four weeks away. I know people like to wait to the last two weeks to register. Guys, you got to book your plane tickets. You can watch online. It's not the same. It's the difference between watching the Super Bowl in person and watching it on TV. It's still good, but it's not quite the same experience, is it? Right? It's like it's like going to the movies in a movie theater or watching them, watching it in your house. It's just a different experience. But if you're going to sign up, for the Elijah Company, if you've already received, I can't tell you how many people we've accepted that haven't re registered. See, in, see the landing in their spam, or they just weren't serious about it to begin with, or they're waiting to get their vacation sorted with their, uh, you don't really need to take a vacation. It's just 
two days. It's just two days off work. And this might be the last one I do. I know I say that. I've said that a few times. I know I've said it a few times, but it takes so much out of me. And, um, you know, we usually deal with a lot of resistance, warfare before and warfare after. And, you know, I always decide at the end of each one if I'm going to do it again. But I'm thinking about I'm thinking seriously about not doing it again. So uh, I say that every time. And if you knew what it took to put to pull this event off and I mean, how many you know scores of hours I study and, and and pray and and prepare so that I can give you these seven classes, It's seven classes. But it takes me 100 hours. To, you know, it's just I don't know if it's 100 hours, but it's a lot of hours to put these things together because it's not just simple. I'm not just teaching you how to hear the voice of God. If you're a prophet or a highly prophetic person, you already know how to hear the voice of God. Uh, one of the things I'm going to teach you on this time is the warfare that the prophets face, the occultic level warfare. And uh, because some of you are getting hit so hard. And I was on a broadcast with Cindy Jacobs not too long ago. And we were talking about how the prophets are getting attacked and you need to know what's going on. See, I'm connected with the elder prophets in close relationship. So we have discussions that you guys aren't uh, necessarily, uh, well, you're not part of. And so I learn a lot of things directly from them and, and share. And, and uh, that's, you know, that's, that's, uh, you know, a wonderful opportunity, but I want you to be able to tap into the same sort of uh, training. You got to go to globalpropheticcenter.com and you're going to look for the Elijah company. And you're going to apply because we don't just let everybody come. But you need to make sure we're not landing in your spam. Where you, you know, where you're going to be getting an email from, I think it's info at jenniferleclair.org, which is not a manned email. Nobody checks that email other than it kicks out. That's the email that kicks out your acceptance letter. All right. So that's where your acceptance letter comes from. So go to globalpropheticcenter.com and you're going to look for the prophetic. You're going to look for the intensives the Elijah company and uh, check that out. If you're going to come, go ahead and get registered. Amen. 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 God is good. Listen, remember awakening prayer hubs. We've got 10 sponsorships for people in emerging economies. That means not America, not Canada, not Australia or New Zealand, not, not Western Europe. <laughs> not South Africa, emerging economies, uh, the third world nations, nations where there's it's not as advanced as these other nations. If you want to apply for a scholarship, you can do that. But most of you don't, that are listening to me, you know, you're not going to uh, qualify for a sponsor. So please don't, please don't apply for one because it causes up a bottleneck in our systems. But you can go to uh, Awakening Prayer Hub, <laughs> awakeningprayerhubs.com and there's a tab called Launch. And uh, God is good, guys. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get off here because I see this. It's, it's the broadcast is beginning to deteriorate with people asking uh, inappropriate questions and making inappropriate remarks. So we're going to get off here today. If you want to serve today, if you want to sew today, you can do that before we pray you out. Go to uh, jenniferleclair.org slash donate. So a one time seed there and make a donation there. Hello, Jennifer. God bless you, Jennifer Simonis. You can go to Cash App. Cash app is dollar sign prophetic books. And I'm going to pray you out in just a minute. We're going to be done for today. Cash app, dollar sign prophetic books. Text the word pray 754-701-2161 and follow the prompts. Text the word pray to 754-706-4707 and follow the prompts. Then use the PayPal, paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. Use the Venmo. Venmo is at Jennifer LeClaire. Use the Zell. Zell is info. At Jennifer LeClaire. Hello, Cindy Lou. Use the uh, P.O. Box, P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida 33303. You can use the Facebook stars and the YouTube stickers. Hello, Georgia. God bless you. Hello, Emily. Let me pray you guys out today in the name of Jesus. God, I lift up all my awakening prayers leaders, all the listeners on this broadcast and the replay. <laughs> I lift up all the Awakening House Church leaders, the Awakening House of Prayer leaders, my local congregation, our web church members. I just lift up the Ignite Network members, the Company of Seers, the Global Prophetic Center, Elijah Company, uh, the School of the Spirit TV students, all of my YouTube subscribers, and all those who read my books. And I ask you, Lord, bless us indeed. Lord, enlarge our territory. Let your hand of power rest upon us. 
and keep us from evil and causing pain in Jesus' name. Lord, this is a day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you, Lord, you protect us from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Lord, give us crazy favor with people around us. that They would want to bless us. Lord, help us to press into your heart to new levels, to sit in the secret place, in silence, waiting to hear your voice, the instruction of your heart for our next season. Lord, save uh, souls in, in our families, heal bodies, deliver people from demons, restore relationships, marriages, friendships, sister and brother uh, dynamics, God. Bring home the prodigals. I plead the blood of Jesus over us. And I ask you, Lord, to help us to discern and navigate your will today. Help us to walk worthy of our calling. Lord, help us to walk in health and prosper. Help us, Lord, to overcome every demon power. And I decree and declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, but every tongue that rises up against us shall be condemned in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Guys, don't tolerate Jezebel. Have a breakthrough day.